But I realized that a lot of times that we think Christianity is just being a good person. But there's a lot of good people who are going to go straight to hell. Because being good isn't quite good enough to live up to God's standard. And we want to be more than just good people. We want to be God's kind of people. We want to say our lives are focused on Christ, whatever he wants from us, whatever he asks of us. We want to be people who walk with Jesus and talk with Jesus and act like Jesus. We don't want to be just simple kind of guys. We want to be savior kind of guys. And so that's what this event is about. It's about going from just being good people. Because most of you guys, you're good people. Most of you. (laughs) We're glad you're all here. (laughs) bunch of roughnecks. (laughs) We're really glad you're here, but we don't want you to just try to be a good person. We want you to follow the Savior. And so tonight, uh, I invited a friend of mine. uh, He pastors a great church uh, in New Hampshire. Got a whole bunch of campuses like us, similar kind of church. They're loud and strong and like lots of of people coming to Christ. Uh, And so I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Anthony to the stage. I just want you to get to your feet and welcome Pastor Anthony. And then I just have to say one more thing. He's from, he's, he's right outside of Boston. The Patriots suck. Come on, baby. Yes. Yeah. Hey, put your hands together for your pastor. Come on, somebody. Go ahead and have a seat. Yeah, yeah. And how about the band? Can we put our hands together for the band and the tech team and the tech team? Because a band would be nothing without the tech team, right, boys? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm telling you what, I love what's going on here. Fuel in that house. Come on, guys. Put your hands together one more time, right? I love your pastor. I love what God is doing here. I love your pastor. He and Kelly have just been a blessing to our church. You know, he's always trying to stir things up. We get into our hotel room last night, and uh, Pastor Eric, you know, I I mean, I hear you here in Minnesota, you know. I mean, you got like the best high school football team around called the Minnesota Vikings, right? Aren't they like the best high school football team around? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, and I get to my room, and he's got this big poster of, of Brett Favre. That's how far back you have to go, preacher. So, 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 yeah, so, so, you know, since you haven't had one of these for a while, I brought you a New England Patriots Super Bowl shirt for you, preacher, right there. For the preacher, put your hands together, guys, come on. I, I'm pumped. <laughs> I, I'm pumped about being here, guys. I've, I, I've been excited uh, about being here. You know, there's something great going on here. And let me just say this to some of you guys. This is what church should look like. I mean, Jesus Christ said, I'll come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. And a lot of times we grew up in a form of religion that actually lied to us about what it meant to be an authentic man of God, to actually follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus isn't a taker. He's a giver. Jesus Christ didn't come here to box you in. Jesus Christ came here to let you out. Who knows what I'm talking about? Come on, somebody. Amen. And and what I want some of you to hear tonight in this first session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one talk in two parts. And so, you know, for the next 20, 25 minutes, I just want you to lean in because I believe this about the guy sitting next to you as much as I believe this about you. There's kingdom greatness inside of you. And when you come to a church, let me just tell you something. We truly do believe this. The church shouldn't be boring. I mean, the church, this is the church of the living God. He was crucified. He was buried. And how many of you know three days later he rose again from the dead? Come on, somebody. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, man, yet shall he live. And when you come to church, there ought to be life in the church. And here's what I believe about the church and the living God. It ought to be the men leading the charge. Come on, guys. I'm telling you, it ought to be the men leading the charge. And so, and so I love, 
I love the fact that Jesus Christ didn't come here. I love what pastor said a few minutes ago. He was a real man's man. If you follow the ministry of Jesus Christ in the Bible, you'll see many times, Jesus layeth the smacketh downeth. I'm just telling you, Jesus didn't take no crap. Jesus Christ came for a reason, and that reason mattered. You want to know why? Because eternity hangs in the balance. I want you to know there really is a heaven, there really is a hell, and the decision you make about the Lord Jesus Christ will determine where you will spend forever. Jesus Christ, listen, he came here to do something for you that you couldn't do for yourself. We don't deserve it. It's called grace. And thank God for this, that God's not mad at us. He's mad about us. I mean, John chapter three, right? Listen to this. Listen to this. John chapter three, verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That's good news that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Some of you think tonight that God's mad at you. Let me give you a word. God's not mad at you. He's mad about you. Verse 17 says this that the Father didn't send the Son into the world to condemn the world. Now listen, guys, this is good news for some of you, but that the world through him, somebody say through him, him. might be saved. Come on, somebody, let's give God glory tonight. Amen. And so here's what I want you to know. The answer isn't in religion. The answer is in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I love the heart of Pastor Eric, and I love the heart of this church, because Joel chapter 3 tells us this, that it is our responsibility to go to the nations and stir up, stir up the mighty men. And gentlemen, there's something stirring up in this room tonight. Come on, amen. And it's real, and it's authentic. And I want you to know this. For some of you, I don't, I barely know any of you in this room. It was cool getting to know some of you earlier and hanging out out there. Uh, here's the deal, and, and I love this. this. This church, listen, the crossing church isn't about hype. It's not about hype. It's about the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you have the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ, you stir things up, and then there's some hype in the house. Come on, right? It's awesome. And by the way, I have a new idol in my life. It's Big Al, the burrito eater. I mean, Al. I don't know where Al is, but I hope he's just slamming a Zantac somewhere or whatever that is, you know. Uh, But we serve an amazing God. Somebody say amen. Amen. And, And here's the thing about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of people know what Jesus did, but they don't understand why Jesus did what he did. All right, I grew up in an organized religion where, you know, I knew about the death, the burial, the resurrection. I knew the Christmas story, the Easter story. I could just roll out the facts, but I never knew why Jesus did what he did. And I want you to know there's a huge why before the what. And it's huge that you understand it. It's very important as men that we understand why Jesus did what Jesus did. Because the Bible says this. How many of you know you're sitting next to one screwed up dude? Raise your hand. Come on, let's judge somebody in the house. On a count of three, look at somebody around you and say, yeah, I'm talking about you. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm talking about you, right? I mean, that's what the, the Bible says this. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Listen, you may be exceptional, but you are not the exception to all have sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God, and that's the bad news, but I got some great news for you. Jesus Christ showed up to do something about it. Jesus Christ didn't. Listen, a lot of people think that God's mad at them because of their mess. Your mess didn't push Jesus Christ away. Actually, Jesus Christ showed up to step into your mess and to turn it into a message. Come on, somebody. Amen. And that's good news. That's good news for you tonight. And you want to know why Jesus Christ came? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I want you to see this verse. It's huge. Then they will come to their senses. How many of you know somebody that needs to come to their senses? Come on, somebody, right? Right? And they will come to their senses. Now, listen to this. This is a heavy verse. But here at the Crossing Church, we truly do believe the Word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. And we do believe God. the Bible is God's Word. And Jesus said this, and some of you need to hear this tonight. My Word is truth, and the truth shall set you free. Who knows what I'm talking about? Come on, somebody. Amen. And listen to the truth of God's Word, that they would come to their senses and escape the devil's trap. Now listen, this is in the Bible. I'm about to lay down and show you and roll out why Jesus Christ came and did what he did. That they would escape the devil's trap for they have been, next two words? Everybody, next two words? That's a big deal. And for some of you tonight, this is going to forever change your life. Because here's what I want you to know. Jesus Christ, and I'm going to repeat it. 
Some of you dudes think you're so, you, you, you've blown us so much, you screwed up so much. And we have a saying at my church, and it says this, Jesus Christ showed up to, cha- to turn our disaster pieces into masterpieces. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. He wants to do that. And some of you think that, man, you've screwed up so bad, you, you've broken so many promises, you've gone so far that God actually has crossed his arms and he's turned his back on you. And I want you to know that's not what Jesus Christ did. God loved you so much, he stepped towards you and he died on a cross and he opened up his arms and said, I love you. That's good news, right? But here's why. Go back to that verse real quick. And I want you to see this because for they have been held captive to, uh, by him, the devil, to do whatever he wants. Here's what a lot of people don't understand. You know, I, I talk to guys. I live in a very unchurched region of the world, and our church really is a lot like the crossing church. That's why I love your preacher because, you know what, we're here to depopulate hell and populate heaven. Come on, somebody. Amen. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. We learn this from the word of God. The Bible says that people really do die. People who die without Jesus Christ, they spend eternity in hell. And that news sucks, but there's some great news. It doesn't have to be that way. You want to know why? Because God has raised up a church in this region that's called the Crossing Church. And we're going to do anything short of sin to bring people to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we're going to do. Because I have family and friends, and if the Bible is true, listen to me, if the Bible is true, and I don't know if you're a Christian here or not, but but just for a minute, this is what we believe as Christians. We really do believe the Bible is true, and the word of God can set you free, and we do believe that the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what Jesus said. He said, I've come to give you life and to give you more abundantly, but make no mistake about it, there is one that's come to kill, steal, and destroy. And I say this, the devil's had enough. It's time to give it all to Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that. And so Jesus Christ looked down and said, man, these guys are jacked up. They have screwed up. Sin has separated these people from us. And so God the Father said, we need to do something about it. And Jesus said, Dad... I'll do something about it. And the Holy Spirit, God said, I'll make it happen. And so God became a man. And God showed up here. And the Bible says, and the word was made flesh to dwell among us. And why did Jesus Christ came? Well, first of all, we know the Bible says that outside of Christ, we're being held captive by sin and Satan. You want to know why Jesus Christ came? Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Look at this, guys. And if the words are bolded, capitalized, or underlined, I want you to read them with me. It says, for the Son of Man came to seek. He not only came to seek. He didn't just show up to walk around. He came with an intensity. He came here with a mission. He came here with you all mine. He came here because you and I were being held by sin and Satan. And he showed up here to go to war on our behalf. So he not only came to seek us, but he came to save us. Why? Because we were, last word? And you know what the Bible says? Listen, stay with me. And and the Bible doesn't describe us as lost, just wandering around in the dark, you know, just kind of just trying to find our way. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It was worse than that. We weren't just lost. You already saw in the Word of God, we were being held captive. And whether you realize it or not, Jesus Christ came here to set the captive free. And I don't know what hurt, habit, or hang up you're dealing with, what addiction you may be shackled to, but I want you to know Jesus Christ has showed up to set you free. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's good news tonight. Listen to me. Guys, he loves you. He cares about you. It doesn't matter what's going on, what's happened. You know the great thing about Jesus Christ, and it's this. Let me tell you right now. Jesus loves you so much, he'll meet you right where you are. See, I grew up in a religion that said, you better shape up or ship out. Well, you got to do this and do this and do this. Jesus Christ isn't about do, 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 do. Jesus Christ is about it is finished. He is about done. He's about stepping and getting it done. And here's the deal about Jesus Christ, man. He came to fire you up. He came to actually add some fuel to your life so that you can go somewhere. And here's the thing about Jesus. Listen, here it is. He meets us where we are. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter. Here's what matters. He'll meet you where you're at, but he loves you too much to keep you there. He loves you too much. To keep you there. And so what does he want to do? He wants to step in and do something about it. 
He wants to step in and he wants to do some business. You say, well, hold on. You mean God's not mad at me? No. No. You see, before God was even on your mind, you were on his mind. Before Jesus was even in your heart, man, you were on his heart. And the Bible said that he loved you so much that God wanted you to know how much he loved you that he didn't just send Pastor Eric. He didn't just give you a book. He didn't give you a priest. He didn't give you religion. That God himself came and demonstrated for each and every one of us his love by dying on a cross for us. Somebody thank God for that. Amen. That's good news. That is great news. And I love 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and this is great. Listen, he died Let's do it again. He died. Listen, listen to me. You're not excluded from what Jesus came to do. You're included. Listen to me. Listen. Some of you need to hear this. You're not excluded. You're included. Jesus didn't come to die for the perfect dude down the street or the guy that you think's got it all together. Like, this guy's got all this crap together. No way, man. For all of sin it comes short of the glory of God. And the promise of the word of God is this. Jesus did what Jesus did for you. For everyone. You want to know why? Because we're... Because of sin and saint, we're being held captive, and it broke the heart of God. So God said, I got to do something about that. I can't stand, I can't stand the thought of eternity without you. And so God became a man to go to war for you. He died. This is huge. He died so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. You see, Jesus showed up and said, hey, man, you know what? Some of you are sitting here and you're wondering if your marriage is going to make it. You know what Jesus said? I showed up and, and I want you to know something. I got a better way of doing marriage. I, I got a better way of doing that. And I, I got a better way of doing that because I am the way. I'm the way, the truth, and, and I am the life. And I, and I didn't come here to judge you. I didn't come here to push you away. I came in to here. I showed up here to step into your mess. Because I've got a better way of doing that. And I remember the day that I had to look at myself and I said, how are those decisions working out anyway for you? How's that really working out for you? I can't deny, we can't deny the love of Christ. And it says, instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Now, listen, and all of this is a, read it with me, gift from God. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to earn it. You say it sounds too good to be true. And when things sound too good to be true, they usually are. Not in this case. It's a gift that God did all the heavy lifting. All of it. None of that was easy for Jesus. The cross wasn't easy for Jesus. They beat the crap out of him. One of the most powerful verses is in Isaiah chapter 52 in the Old Testament where it said that as he hung on a cross, it was talking about, you know, what Jesus would go through, that he didn't even appear as a human being. They treated the Savior like trash. Why was he willing to go through all that? Because he was willing to go to war for you. He was willing to exchange his life so that you can have real life in the here and now and the when and then. It is a gift from God to, listen, listen, a gift from God who, read this with me, brought us back to himself through Christ. It's not through the church. It's not through religion. It's not through keeping the Ten Commandments. The only way to be brought back to God is through Christ. Somebody say, through Christ. through Christ. Why would Jesus do that for me? I don't know. I don't know. I just know that he did. I know what Galatians chapter 1 says. Ready? Ready? Listen to this. I hope this rocks some of your world. Jesus gave his life for... He didn't die for his sins. He stepped into your place. He took your place. He became your substitution. That's how much you mean to God. 
Religion has lied to you. Religion has told you that God's mad, that you don't, you don't add up, that you, you can't keep the standard. And Jesus is like, I know that. And that's why it's not about keeping a standard. It's about surrendering your life. And he says in 1 John chapter 2, listen to this. This is great. 1 John 2 says, he is the atoning He did for you what you couldn't do for yourself so that you can have what you don't deserve. God's not mad at you. He's mad about you. And Jesus literally to some of you men tonight is saying, come home. Come home. Come home. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. The way to get back to the Father is not through religion. It's through me. And tonight, guys, if you allow Jesus, no matter how messed up it is, he will step into your mess. He will meet you right where you are but he will love you too much to leave you there. And at the end of the day, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yes, shall he live? But he asks a very important question. Do you or will you believe this? Hey, would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me real quick? I just want to pray for you. I don't know your story, but I do know the story of Christ. And his story was all about you. And maybe you're sitting here tonight and say, preacher, to be honest with you, I grew up in religion. I'm not mad at Jesus. I'm not mad at God. I just, I just never knew why he did what he did. Now you do. So, so what do you do? Well, the Bible says, notice how I keep saying the Bible, because at the Crossing Church, we preach the Bible. It's God's word, his authority. What does the Bible say? And the Bible says, for whosoever, that's you. Remember, you're not excluded, you're included. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, God loved you so much, he wanted to make it as simple as possible to come back to the Father. And tonight, if you're ready to take a step of faith and say, you know what? I need a relationship with Christ. I need Jesus in my life. I want to invite you quietly in your heart, right there where you're sitting, to pray a very important prayer, a game-changing prayer, a prayer that will forever change your life. And I want you to just pray this. And prayer is talking to God. I can't pray this prayer for you, but I can come by your side and help you. Let's talk to God quietly in your heart. Just pray, dear Jesus. Just pray it right now in your heart. Dear Jesus, I get it tonight. Now I understand why you did what you did. And you did it for me. Thank you. Jesus, tonight, I ask you to be my savior. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Tonight, to the best of my ability, I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you stand up, speak up, or come up. But I want to ask you a question. If you just prayed that prayer and you said, tonight, tonight, I'm crossing the line of faith. Tonight, you know what? I did some business with God. Tonight, I I'm starting my relationship with Christ. On the count of three, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I want you to raise your hand. I'm not going to embarrass you. Ready? One, two, three. Nice and high. Nice and high. Wow. Keep them up for a second. Hold. Oh, keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. Just for a second. I, I can't even count how many hands are up right now. God bless every one of you. 
Heads bowed, eyes closed. Guys, put your hands down. Guys, with your hands up, look at me. I'm not going to call you out. Just, just look at me. Hands down. Just look at me. If you raised your hand, look at me. Here's what I want you to know. Based on the authority of God's word tonight. You walked in this room one way. You're walking out a son of God. I want you to know something, guys. That tonight, you have been given. Never forget what I'm about to tell you. You have been given a clean heart. And a brand new start because of Jesus. Welcome to the family of God. Would everybody look up here? And Fuel, will you celebrate with these guys that just gave their heart to Jesus Christ? Would you celebrate, Fuel? Will you celebrate with these men? We can get hyped up about all kinds of stuff. But tonight, tonight. Men did business with God. Tonight, men received a clean heart and a brand new start. And for every one of you men, I want you to know, the crossing church is more than a church. It's a place that we call family. And I want to encourage each and every one of you that you started your relationship with Christ tonight to come and be a part of this house. Plant yourself in a house of God, and the Bible says you will flourish. You now have been born into God's family. Pastor Eric and his incredible team in this church will take you on a journey, and they will help you grow in Jesus Christ. Let's celebrate one more time, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, preacher.